Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. We who are in the business of keeping you in suspense find ourselves in a quandary at this time of the year. The elements of suspense, murder, mayhem, and macabre mischief are awkwardly out of place at this festival of peace and love. Yet that first Christmas was full of suspense. There was the problem of lodgings for the delicate mother that chill evening when there was no room at the inn. And there was great mystery when suddenly the star appeared in the east. Finally, there was the magnificent climax and happy ending when the three kings of the Orient arrived at last bearing gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. We feel that we cannot improve upon this tale, so we will bring you another, along with our best wishes for a most merry Christmas. Listen, listen then, as Mr. Raymond Burr stars in Out for Christmas, which begins in just a moment. Here's actress Joan Bennett. It's terrible to try to act with a dreadful cold. To feel better quickly, I take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. Here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Out for Christmas, starring Mr. Raymond Burr. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I hadn't figured on being out for Christmas, but my prison record paid off. Takes a lot of good behavior to knock time off and an armed robbery and assault rap, but I was a good boy, model prisoner. Took everything they threw at me with a... Well, not exactly with a smile. I don't smile much. But I took it without griping, so I'm out for Christmas. And Christmas is as good a time as any for what I gotta do. The town looked cruddy. We got phony tin Christmas trees and the lampposts along the main drag and colored lights all over the joint and Christmas carols screeching at you from loudspeakers everywhere. Even the saloons got red and green streamers all over the place and the bar mirrors all frosted, black snow. And a big bowl of slop called Tom and Jerry they're pushing. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, what would it be? A little Christmas cheer? A hot Tom and Jerry, maybe? Ain't you got any whiskey? Oh, sure. We got whiskey. Give me a straight shot. Okay. Can't you get anything on that jute box but them Christmas carols? What's the matter? Don't you like carols? Oh, they stink. (laughs) You won't think so after you get a couple of belts under your belt. Do you think so? Sure, it's Christmas, man. Yeah, so I heard. (laughs) That tastes good. Real good, man. Say, you look sort of familiar. Uh, don't I know you from someplace? I was wondering how long it'd take. Yeah, the voice is familiar, and your eyes sort of... Joe, Joe Watson. Joe, I heard you was going to get out soon. Charlie Jones told me. But I didn't know you'd be out for Christmas. Yeah, they got big-hearted. Say, you put on a little weight. Yeah, that's why I didn't recognize you. 30 pounds, prison child. But you look real good, Joe, real good. Yeah. Hey, where is Charlie? You been in tonight? Mm, not yet, but he'll be around probably. Gotta see him. You know where he's living at? Yeah, he's got a room over on 4th Street. Room? I figured he'd be living in a flop house. Oh, not Charlie. He's doing okay since he got out. Got a steady job. How about you, Joe? You got a job lined up? Yeah, I got a job lined up. A uh, good job? It'll be good. As good as I can make it. Hey, 
Has the last minute shopping really got you down? Are you dashing and prancing all over the town? You bought a lot of presents and you still have lots to go? Well, go, 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 get a scripto. You don't have to know a size. You don't worry about the fit. A new scripto pen or pencil always makes a hit. Or mom or dad or sister, Aunt Jane or Uncle Joe. Go, 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 get a scripto. Go, 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 get a scripto. Get a scripto. Here's the easy, convenient way to finish all your Christmas shopping in a matter of minutes with Scripto pens and pencils, available at stores everywhere. All Scriptos, costing a dollar or more, are handsomely gift-boxed. See the famous Scripto satellite. The satellite outwrites any other pen you've ever used. Costs only $1.95. Enjoy one-stop gift shopping. Go, 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 get a Scripto. Give a Scripto. Scripto. And now, starring Mr. Raymond Burr, Act Two of Out for Christmas. They even had this room and house where Charlie was staying, loused up for Christmas. There was a moth eating poinsettia wreath in the door and red and green lights in the landlady's window. Charlie's room was on the fourth floor at the back. Joe! Yeah. Oh, so they let you out for Christmas. Yeah. Well, come on in. <laughs> Gee, it's good to see you, Joe. <laughs> good to see you, Charlie. Say, what the... What you got there? Oh, that's an electric train. Just a minute, I'll turn it off. Electric train? What for? Oh, my sister's kid. That's all he talks about for Christmas. An electric train. <laughs> so I got him one at a discount at the place where I work, but... I wanted to see if it works okay. You know how it is. Yeah. So what's the idea of the Christmas tree? Well, uh, living by myself and all, I thought I'd have my, my own tree. It's just a little one. You lost your marbles? Well, it's Christmas, Joe. <laughs> the guys in cell block four ought to see you now playing with electric trains into your own Christmas tree. And I bet they'd like to be doing the same thing. Not me. Did you check up on Malloy like I asked you to? Yeah. Yes, he's still on the police force. Good. You got a gun? No, no. I, I don't have no use for guns anymore. Know where I can get one? Well, sure. I guess I could locate one. Well, I told you to. In my last letter, I told you. Get a gun for me, I said. I know, Joe, but look, pal, I thought that... Well, I hope maybe you'd change your mind. Charlie, from the day he testified against me, I swore I'd get him. His testimony did it, you know. That's what convicted me. He sent me up. He had to testify the way he did. He didn't have to be so convincing. But, Joe, what good will it do? You'll only get the chair. Uh, I'm not afraid of the chair. I've seen enough of life. It stinks. I ain't in love with it. I'd just as soon leave it so long as I take that rat with me. But it ain't only him, Joe. What do you mean? He's married now. You kidding? What kind of a dizzy broad would want him... You ain't gonna like this, Joe. Ain't gonna like what? The dizzy broad that married him is Lucille. Lucille. My Lucille. That's right. I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah. Funny. It's yeah, real funny. She wrote me. She, she couldn't wait for me no longer. You remember when I got the letter. I remember. But she didn't say who it was. She never answered my letters after that. Oh, that lousy double cross. Well, you went up for 10 to 20, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, I guess she never counted on me making it an eight and time off for good behavior. But eight years is a long time for a young girl to wait, Joe. Mike Malloy's a fine guy to throw me over for. Well, yeah. makes it dandy. Double dandy. It'll be a pleasure to kill them both. Oh, how can you talk that way, Joe? It's Christmas. Christmas is for people who don't know no better. Kids and idiots. Now, Joe, listen to me now. Forget all about Malloy and Lucille. You got a chance to make a new life for yourself. Like I'm doing. I can get you a job where I'm working. I'm sure I can. What are you doing? I'm Santa Claus in the toy department at Brighton's department store. Ain't no future in that. You're going to be out of work day after tomorrow. No, I'm not. They promised to keep me on. Doing what? Minding the reindeer? Well, Mr. Brighton believes in giving guys like us a chance. And that's why I'm sure that you can get a job there. You come down tomorrow and talk to him. I'll talk to him after Christmas. Hey, good. Oh, say. 
How about coming over to my sister's house for Christmas dinner day after tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, I might even do that. Good! You see, Joe, there ain't no sense in carrying around hatred in your heart, especially at Christmas time. So let Malloy and Lucille have their Christmas in peace. Oh, they'll have their Christmas, all right. Their last Christmas. But then it'll be your last one, too. Uh-huh. I just got to figure different. Never mind the gun. I'll get my own gun tomorrow. But there is one thing I want from you. What's that, Joe? Tomorrow night, I want to borrow your Santa Claus suit. Holiday hustle make you queasy, stomach nervous and uneasy, then... Do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket row? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Tums are the little white tablets in the little green pocket row. Tums for the tummy. T-U-M-S. Bring relief quicker than you'd ever guess. Best for any kind of acid distress. Keep them handy in the pocket row. Keep your tummy under Tums control. Yes, during the busy, bustling season, get quick relief from annoying acid indigestion. Always carry Tums, ten cents. Three-roll pack, a quarter. Or get the new six-roll pack with free metal carrier, 49 cents. And now, starring Mr. Raymond Burr, Act Three of Out for Christmas. Next day, I did my Christmas shopping for a gun. That night, I wrapped Charlie Santa Claus' suit into a bundle took a bus out to the subdivision where Malloy and Lucille had a house. I ducked into an alley behind the supermarket and pulled on the red suit, whiskers and all. It was going to be so easy I had to laugh. They couldn't want a better disguise on Christmas Eve for murder. I didn't have any trouble finding the house, a little box of a house like all the others in the street and decorated with colored lights like all the others. Nobody saw me. Even if they had. Who has a better right than Santa Claus to be on the streets Christmas Eve? The gun felt cold in my pocket as I closed my fist around it and pushed the bell. Even it was wired for Christmas. Yes? Merry Christmas. Why, it's Santa Claus. Aren't you going to ask me in? Well, my husband isn't home yet. That's all right. I'll come in and wait for him. I don't understand. If you don't believe in Santa Claus anymore, Lucille, you ought to... Who are you? Don't you recognize my voice? You... You sound like... Joe. Oh, no. Good old Joe. He was going to wait for me. No matter how long it took. Joe, I thought you were... In the cooler for keeps, Uh uh-uh. I told you I'd come back for you. Here I am. Well, you're too late, Joe. Yeah, so I hear. How come you didn't wait, Lucille? I... I fell in love. With the guy who sent me to prison? With a no-good cop? He didn't send you to prison, Joe. You were guilty. I'd have beat the rap if he hadn't testified the way he he did. He had to testify that way. He was only telling the truth. Yeah, so he could get me out of the way and steal my girl. Joe, you've got things all twisted. It all happened afterwards. I only met him at your trial. We fell in love afterwards. When I couldn't protect myself. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. It just happened. You're telling me. Where is the fuzz? Who? The copper, your old man. He's still on duty. Working overtime to put the arm on some stiff on Christmas Eve? When will he be home? I I expect him any time now. Good. I'm going to be glad to see him. Why, when you hate him so? You see, I... I promised him something. Didn't he ever tell you? No. I promised to kill him when I got out. Joe. Tonight's the night, see? 
Well, you mean it. You, you've got a gun. Sure, I got a gun. And I'm going to use it. On both of you. Both of us? You both double-crossed me. I could kill you first, but... I think I'll wait till your old man comes home. Ought to be interesting to see how he acts. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he tried to make a deal with me. A deal? Yeah, like shoot my wife but let me go free. What a terrible thing to say. You'll see what kind of a creep you married. Joe, do it then. But do it because I ask you. Kill me and let him go. Ah, I come to get you both. And I'm going to get you both. Together. Um, how about some music while we're waiting? Turn on the radio. I, Go on, turn it on. He... He made you happy, Lucy? Yeah, Joe. Very. You made him happy? I hope so. That's nice. Because tonight you're both going to make me happy. By becoming very dead. It's too loud. What's that? Oh, little Lucy, the radio woke her. You got kids? Yeah. Where are no. you going? I had to look in on her and quiet Don't her. Don't try nothing funny. I'll be right behind you. Oh, there now, honey. There, there. It's all right. Mommy just turned the radio on too loud. I'm scared, Mommy. Uh, Mommy! Look behind you. It's Santa Claus. Yes, dear. Santa Claus. Ooh. Mikey, wake up. Huh? Mikey, look, it's Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Santa Claus? I want to see Santa Claus. Of all leading filters, cigarettes can't Filter's best, Kent Filter's best. It makes good sense when you smoke Kent. Kent Filter's best. Of all of the brands of cigarettes, Kent tastes the best. Kent tastes the best. A richer taste than all the rest. Kent Filter's best. And now, starring Mr. Raymond Burr, Act Four of Out for Christmas. Is that time to jam the gun back into my pocket before those two kids were wide awake and all over me, grabbing at my red suit, pulling at my phony whiskers, pushing me into a chair? Did you bring me a present, Santa Claus? Did you? Oh, you ain't your Santa. Oh, get rid of these kids. Where's my present, Santa? Well, I... Well, what did I... you do with the reindeers? What did you do with the reindeers? Well, they're, they're parked outside, Mikey, uh, uh, on the roof. Did you come down the chimney? Oh, yeah, sure. Then why aren't you close to me? Didn't the fire burn you? Well, no, you... See, it's an asbestos suit. No. Now, listen, you, you kids ought to go back to bed. Oh, no, Santa, please, we want our presents. I want to see the reindeers. Well, see, you've got to get them off me. They're so excited, Joe. They've never entertained Santa Claus before. I ain't no Santa Claus. To them you are. Yeah. Santa Claus? Well, what, what? I want to kiss you. Me too, me too. Yeah, darn. All right, you kids. Now, 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 listen to me. Yes, Santa Claus, I'm listening. Me too. Well, you've got to go back to bed now. Well, I want my present. Me too. You'll, you'll get your presents in the morning when you wake up. There, they'll be under the tree. You promise? I promise. Now, now you run off to bed. Now, Count, I, I gotta get going. Now, you, you wouldn't want the other boys and girls to miss their presents because I, I've been goofing off with you, would you? Oh, no, that wouldn't be fair. Uh, all right, then. Off to bed you go. All right. Come on, 
on, Mikey. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. Me too. Yeah. Merry Christmas, kids. And uh, good night. Good night. Come on, Mikey. Oh, Joe. They'll never forget that. Yeah. Neither will I. Merry Christmas, honey. I'm sorry I'm late. Hey, what's this? It's Joe Watson, Mike. Joe Watson? What the devil are you doing here? He came to kill us. What? Take I'll it easy, Mike. Here's my gun. You... You changed your mind? Uh-uh. Your kids changed my mind. They thought he was really Santa Claus, darling. They, they were so excited. Well, uh, Mike, you, you can send me up again. Better to go back for a parole violation, I guess, than for murder. Well, uh, wait a minute. Uh, we got to have a complaining witness. You want to make a complaint, Lucille? No, Mike. I want to thank Joe for giving the kids the best Christmas of their lives. Well, I haven't any complaint then. Merry Christmas, Joe. I still say Christmas is for people who don't know no better. Like kids and idiots. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Suspense, in which Raymond Burr starred in Out for Christmas, written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. In just a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Christmas Eve on CBS Radio, Bing Crosby invites you to celebrate Christmas with the world on our fourth annual Christmas Sing with Bing. With Bing as your guide and CBS Radio as your magic carpet, you'll visit Rome to hear the Vatican Choir. There, too, you'll hear the sound of the bells of St. Peter's as they ring for the holiday mass. On our Christmas Sing with Bing, you'll visit New York and Salt Lake City, Canada, Australia, Holland, France, even places like Hawaii, Alaska, and the Fiji Islands, where carolers and choirs will be waiting to sing the traditional Christmas songs with you. To add to the excitement this year, Mrs. Bing Crosby, Catherine Grant, will be at her husband's side. Whether you spend Christmas Eve at home or out on the highway heading for a holiday destination, join us right here on CBS Radio as most of these same stations present our fourth annual Christmas Sing with Bing. Supporting Raymond Burr and Out for Christmas were Joan Banks, Lillian Bayef, Charles Seal, Carl Swenson, Howard McNear, and Dick Beals. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Mr. Frank Lovejoy starring in The 32nd of December. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the CBS Radio Network.